if you're building a modern business, you might not realize you're sort of responsible for putting the locks on the doors. Uh, you, you might have lots of cloud servers and lots of things that are all over the internet. Well, how do you keep the bad guys out? Well, Cloud Passage is gonna show us just how to do it. Who are you? Rand Wacker, VP of Products for Cloud Passage. Uh, today I'm a walking billboard for cloud server security. So very excited to be here and try to help people understand what they need to know when they're putting servers into the cloud. Probably a lot of people when they you know open their iPad up and go to the Rackspace Cloud and start opening up servers mm -hmm. and building a business, uh, or if they're at our comp competition at Amazon or wherever, right. They don't realize that hey, the locks on those doors aren't really strong, right? Right. And what what you guys are doing is trying to help people put really strong locks on all their virtualized servers, right? Yeah, and and make it easy and automated. Traditionally, when someone's requested a server for a new website or something, you know, there's been an IT department that's spun it up in a data center, and they're responsible for all of the security and everything, so that the developers haven't had to worry about it. But nowadays, it's so easy for someone to go in and just push a button and spin up their own server that they don't know necessarily what they are responsible for. And Rackspace and Amazon and everyone does a very good job of securing their facilities and their networks. But they also make it very clear that the security of the servers themselves is left to the responsibility of the customer. Yeah. And you're a good example of why we're changing our name to Small Teams Big Impacts, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, these these companies now they start with very very s small teams. Instagram with two mm -hmm. people, right? Right. The, guy, the two guys at Universal Studios are running all their web properties because they're outsourcing everything that right. isn't core to their business. Exactly. And security is one of those. Why did, why would they have a third guy on staff that really knows security right. well and how to architect it and how to look for intrusion detection? A lot of people don't know what to do with that. Right. right. Yeah, it's something where um, you know everyone realizes that they need some kind of security on their systems, but they maybe consider it a pain in the butt or it's it's second priority. But as soon as they get compromised, their website gets to face, they have some type of breach where their customers lose confidence, that impacts their business. Yeah. So our goal is really to um, automate everything that they care about from firewalling to multi-factor authentication, um, you know, the intrusion detection and, and host scanning that you'd normally have taken care of by an IT team in a traditional big data center, but we do all, the, all that automatically in the public cloud environment. Yeah, I, I visited a company called NetOptics that puts a box on top of a rack instead of a data center and helps people and governments watch for intrusion detection and all sorts of fun stuff. So you're like a, a virtualized net optics box on top of my cloud servers? Well, actually, we integrate into your cloud servers because one of the challenges of doing security in public cloud, for example, is you don't have access to the network or the hypervisor or anything like that. So we've built um, a really new platform where there's a very small agent, in fact, it's called Don T. Demon, he's on my shirt, that um, runs on your server and connects into our grid that, that we host that will then automate all the, the firewall and all those, all those pieces. You know, if, if you're a, a kid trying to build the uh, next Instagram and, right. and you're starting to spin up some of these servers, whether it be on Linux or, or Windows or whatnot, what do you need to know before you start your business or really get deep into it about security and how to set it up properly and right. then where do you come in? Well, at first you need to understand that you are responsible for the security of those servers. And then what you need to look at is that um, by default, many of those OS distributions are not locked down in a way that would be safe to run in a public environment that's accessible to the world. And so what people can do actually is, you know, using a tool like ours, which actually they can register for free and deploy across a couple dozen servers, is they can put it on their system and we will look and tell them these are the, the different things you need to lock down. Like you said, the door analogy was really good. Um, once they've done that, then we will continually monitor and scan and make sure that everything is in compliance, all your software is up to date, um, and we'll even look and see if you know there's been any compromise where someone's come in and modified your code or any of your system files. Okay. I how much does Cloud Passage cost, or how do I pay for it? How do I get it? So we're actually free for up to 25 servers for our basic version, and then we have a number of advanced paid features, or if you need more servers, then we charge hourly, just like uh, your cloud servers are. 
And we feel this is important because um, when people are building cloud, they're spinning up cloud servers, they can do it you know, these days so cheaply with a credit card or for free that we want it to be as easy as possible for them to get up and running securely from the beginning as opposed to trying to bolt it on afterwards. Yeah. What are you seeing the bad guys do to cloud and, uh, and uh, what are maybe some of the major threats that you, that you guys protect against? So there's, there are known documented cases where there are active scans going on inside these clouds and even from the outside looking for vulnerable servers. Um, you know, we know, for example, that the Sony breaches last year, um, in many cases, were launched from Amazon. Um, and you know, whether those were servers that the bad guys rented or that they compromised from other people, this risk is out there. And in general, the, um, the attackers are looking for vulnerable servers that they can um, you know, either use in their own botnets or that they can get sensitive data off of. Um, and for any company, like any startup that cares about the brand and the trust of their customers, protecting against that is really important. Yeah. What would a developer need to know about what you do and, and how would they geek out with you, you know, when, they sit, when you sit down with a developer and start really working through some of these things? Yeah, I, I sat down with a developer this morning and, and I love that because in the past I've always talked to the security guys that you know, kind of know all the details. But a developer will sit down and think, well, I've, you know, I'm running security groups on Amazon, for example, or you know, I keep all my packages up to date and, and those kinds of things. And, and that's good general practice and good general hygiene. But when I talk about you know, what it really takes to secure a server, like is your SSH locked down in a way that you know, no root login can happen and no one can try to um, you know, guess your passwords or those kinds of things? Um, have you made sure that all of your software packages are not just up to date with the, um, the uh, security from your you know, Ubuntu distribution, but against the you know, most latest published threats and those kinds of things? Um, what are you doing for two-factor authentication? Um, I mean, it's, that's probably one of the most interesting things that, that we do that, that no one else does is that you know, we can um, secure your server so that no one can even see the administrative ports. Um, and until you authenticate your laptop with either um, a USB token or actually pretty soon with an SMS message to your phone, then no one will see anything. We'll open up one little port just for your laptop to log in. And that's a way to completely lock off the server so that you don't have to worry about you know, a software exploit coming out that's going to cause you to panic and have to change all your, your patches and everything. Yeah, two-factor two authentication is pretty interesting. Here at Rackspace, we use that all the time. We have RSA keys. And right. I use Google's uh, app on my iPhone to create a password, right? a, a two-factor authentication. There's this really interesting attack going on right now. And if you search the web for the, the Hail Mary um, SSH attack, um, over the past three or four years, there's been documented cases of, of a stable of thousands of, of uh, zombie servers out there, basically trying random SSH passwords against hosts, you know, not like a big blast all at once, but like once every minute. And if you do that over the course of several years, they can try thousands, if not millions, of passwords, you know, looking for those common dictionary words. And they call it the Hail Mary because it's, you know, they're playing the long con, basically. So what we do and what any good data center would do, like you guys do with your, your secure IDs, is we lock off those ports. And then, you know, just like the, the Google two-factor, that's a good example, where you log in you know, to our portal with your password, send you a code to your phone, then you type that in, and then you can authenticate to SSH or if you're going to do a SQL query or any of those things. And we do all that with no extra infrastructure. So it's really, really easy to lock down your servers that are running in the cloud. Yeah. Talk about SQL, uh, you're not uh, protecting the code against um, bad coding practices, right? You're just trying to keep people from c getting to that code by raising the bar of uh, uh, against security exploits. Right? So we're locking down all of the all the stack and the applications that are running against. So so you know it is people's responsibility on their their Ruby or their Python, whatever they're writing, to make sure that that's secure. But we'll make sure that Apache and MySQL and Postgres and, and all of those pieces are are um, configured properly and securely and up to date. And um, you know, there's a whole bunch of security reports out there. Verizon does a great one every year that says that something like 90 plus percent of security breaches and data breaches where people lose data is due to misconfiguration. Yeah, 
how are you guys funded? What's what's the uh, fundamentals behind your business? Yeah, so we're um, you know we're a Series B right now. We're funded by Benchmark and Tanaya Capital. Um, you know, one of these startups in the one of the cloud mafia groups. So we work really closely with RightScale and New Relic and a lot of people that are at the leading edge of this whole infrastructure as a service world. Yeah. Um, so it's a, you know it's a really exciting time as you know cloud as we know it didn't exist five years ago everyone's really kind of building infrastructure from the ground up. And yeah. so it's it's really awesome to be in this space and working with people like Rackspace and working with all these other companies in evolving how IT happens. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And there, you mentioned some of my favorite companies, which really informed why we called the show Small Teams Big Impacts. Exactly. So thanks for coming out. Where do we learn more about it? Go to cloudpassage.com and you can register for free, deploy a daemon um, on your servers, and you can actually be um, securing your servers in under five minutes. Very cool. Thanks for coming out. Thanks very much. Take care. Mm -hmm.